Remembering God through the body means that we are really seeing our body as a sacred vessel that we have chosen in this lifetime and we can constantly focus on cleansing that vessel, on making that vessel responsive, allowing this vessel to be, to listen to life and to move with life. How to find God through the body. First of all, what is God? Let's speak about this. What do I even mean by this? Do I mean about like this kind of religious God that is this man in the sky that will punish the sinners and um, uh, this kind of angry God that you need to behave or else he will be angry with you? No, 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 no. That's not the kind of God I'm talking about. Uh, when I say God, it's synonym to when I say love. I'm not speaking about romanticized concept of love, but I'm talking about love that is the glue that holds the whole manifestation together. Also, truth with a capital T is what will be a synonym to God, this absolute truth, the ultimate truth. Not the truth in the moment, the truth of what feels true to you, what feels true to me in this specific moment, but this absolute truth. The universe, yeah, the divine, the ultimate, that's what I mean by God. And that is something that we all know so intimately and uh, we all remember when we are born, we remember this. There's this beautiful story about a child that uh, it's a child in a family. And um, in this family, a newborn baby. Yeah, so the, the couple gave birth to, a, the woman gave birth to a new newborn child. And the toddler that is in the family, one day approached his uh, parents and says, Mom, Dad, can I go and spend some time in the room with the baby by myself? And they say, that's strange, it's a strange request from a toddler. But okay, okay, they let him go, they go like, okay, yeah, you can go and, and have a moment with your little sister. And uh, they had this radio nanny. Those of you parents, or if you have nieces, nephews like me, then uh, you will know this radio nanny is like, there's like two pieces of this equipment. One piece is with the baby and another piece with the parents so they can listen. If the baby is screaming or uh, making some sounds, you can hear. So that radio nanny was there. So they, they are listening what happens when this toddler goes to the baby and starts talking to the baby. The toddler says, baby, tell me about God, because I'm starting to forget. They listened to this and they were just like, what? And uh, it's a beautiful story that illustrates how this little toddler remembers God and how he knows that his little newborn sister also remembers God. And he's starting to forget. What a miracle. It's a real story that happened to people in, in our world, in our times. And um, it just illustrates something that we all know so intimately. We all remember God inside of us. That God, that ultimate reality that we all are. And we can have a direct experience of it in every moment of our lives. And this experience is what really takes us out of this profound disaster that we find ourselves in, this disaster of forgetfulness, this disaster of forgetting our true nature, of forgetting our true origin of our source. This source is our destination. This is this is the ultimate uh, journey to recognize the ultimate human potential is to recognize ourselves as divine, to recognize our true nature. 
until we recognize it, until we taste that grace, because it is through the workings of grace that we recognize it, until then we live in that forgetfulness, in that limited identity that we we suffer because we identify with everything that happens to us. Someone offended us, some, something hurt us, we judge ourselves. So all of this becomes a nightmare and we live in that nightmare and we believe in it and we go into our past and we remember all the wrong things that people did to us or the wrong things that we believe we did. This is a nightmare. Yeah. And only when we wake up, and this is what awakening stands for, when we wake up from that nightmare, then we become free. And then we recognize that we don't need to disappear from the world or remove ourselves and go and meditate full time in the Himalayas or somewhere in the desert. We can actually live awake now. We can choose that. And our body is a tremendous portal for that. Although it's not so known, I have to say, because traditionally, when we speak about spirituality, traditionally it is said that it's like you need to remove yourself from the body and then you recognize your divine nature. Well, in the way I uh, experience it, it's the opposite, in fact. Yeah, it's one path, yeah, and there are lots of people practicing that path. So many monks are constantly in prayer, in uh, this uh, asceticism, yeah, choosing that ascetic path, removing themselves from the world. And it has place, and it's so beautiful, and it's so incredibly challenging, and it's profound. And I've had uh, phases of my life when I've chosen this asceticism, yeah, removing myself from everything, sometimes for short periods of time, sometimes for longer periods of time. Uh, it is beautiful, but if we choose to be active in this world, and most of us do, and it is so important now for those uh, leaders to rise, those leaders who want to make our hands dirty, who want to make a change in this world, who really deeply care for this humanity, for the evolution of humankind, for those of us who really have this fire in the heart and want to be here and want to contribute, then for us it's a different path. Yeah, it's the path of being in the world, yet remembering. It is so challenging. It is so challenging because the life is designed to make us forget. Yeah, there's so many distractions. There's so many things pulling us in all sorts of directions. Yeah, desire to accomplish something, desire to achieve something. But then, yeah, and it can come from a beautiful place. But then if we take it personally, if we take it to our ego and as a, something that boosts our ego, then that's it. We lost the point. Yeah, the point is not to build that ego and boost that ego and become kind of special. But on the contrary, yeah, doing it with remembering that you only do great things when you recognize your true nature and when you allow that great power to move through you. I spoke about it. In, uh, uh, thank you guys for your comments. Uh, I spoke about this more in my previous life. You can go back to it and, and watch that about how, where is our true power as leaders? Where is our true power? It's not our personal power. It's that universal power that we allow to move through us. That's where true power lies. And here comes the body piece, yeah? Finding God through the body. So what happens to our body? Our body tends to accumulate what you all know, pain here, pain there, tension here, lower back, yeah, something, tension, yeah, we tend to accumulate tension, and that tension is a result of what, you know, habits, yeah, sitting all day long. I look at people, you know, whenever you see short hair people, or people with short hair, or people putting their hair up, Everybody has their necks forward, yeah, the phone, neck, like looking at the phone, looking at the screen, yeah, tension, then it creates tension in the neck. Yeah, so many people suffer from this. Lower back, yeah, mid back, uh, tension, uh, pain, pain, different kind of pains. All of this is product of stress. 
So we are so stressed, we don't even feel our body anymore. We are so uh, taken by what is going on, yeah, by by what we need to accomplish, by, by what, what kind of thing we want to achieve, but by what kind of pressure we put ourselves into. Yeah, we forget the body, we disconnect from the body, then we just go into that stress and we don't feel the body. You can just sit all day in this position. Yeah, how many people are doing that? Yeah, just and the eyes focused on one place, the whole body, it creates an incredible amount of uh, tightness and tension in the body. So stress results in tension. Yeah, tension results in stress. It's like this uh, in a circle. And uh, when there is tension in the body and then the people say, okay, my problem is that I cannot relax. Then they say like, okay, now I need to relax. And then what happens? Even more tension, right? Because if you try to relax, you're like, okay, I'm so tense, I need to relax. Then what you do is you just repress what is there. And uh, so it's like there's tension. Okay, I don't, I don't want to be tense. I don't want to be stressed. Stress is bad for me. So let's just not be stressed. And, okay, I'm not stressed. And then what? Even more stress. Yeah, that's how our modern life is. And uh, even with age, darling, what I have to tell you, even yesterday we had this conversation with my team, that uh, one member of the team said, wow, I'm not having all this pain in my back. This is age. I'm like, right, this is age. This is not age, this is degradation. If you don't evolve, you degrade. There's no other way. Our evolution doesn't stay in one place. If we don't do conscious effort to keep evolving, to keep ourselves clean, to keep ourselves on this path of remembering what I just started speaking about. We degrade, we contract, you know, we shrink. Like you look at older people, normally they, they, they kind of shrink. Yeah, they, they become smaller, uh, um, more vata, yeah, in Ayurvedic terms, more dryness in their skin, dryness in the bones. It doesn't have to be that way. Yeah? So, remembering God through the body means that we are really seeing our body as a sacred vessel that we have chosen in this lifetime and we can constantly focus on cleansing that vessel, on making that vessel responsive, allowing this vessel to be, to listen to life and to move with life. You see? Oh, this is really strange music all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> My neighbors or someone passing by. <laughs> so, how to keep that body clean and conducive? Because what happens is that the body stops being conducive and then uh, we just contract on ourselves and we try to kind of make our body stronger maybe yeah in good case yeah if people are exercising trying to accumulate energy make the body stronger but it's still not it the body is meant to be conducive the body is meant to really conduce all that divine energy that universal energy always available to us coming back again to that conversation about power the power isn't how much we're capable of conducing energy and when we find a way to open the body from inside, not from that like, okay, I'm stressed, let me, let me relax, and then suppression happens, but this relaxation that ha comes from within, that relaxation that comes from really deep landing into the body from inside, not from the outside. We tend to treat our bodies like objects. We treat them from outside. We grab them. We want them to look a certain way. We have a, this whole like unhealthy relationship with the body going. But if we learn to look at the body from inside, I don't know if it makes sense to you. I, I wonder if it makes sense to you. What does it mean to look into the body from inside and soften the body from the inside? Can you imagine this? Just now, you know, you're listening to me. There, there are lots of people here right now. Right now, can you stop for a moment? Take a deep breath. Feel how you're breathing with your whole body. Yeah, your breath comes all the way to your lower belly. 
it spreads through your arms, it spreads through your legs. Can you breathe with your whole body and really direct your attention inward? Hmm? And stay with it. You will see mind comes in very quickly. Oh, it's just taking too long. Okay, maybe I need to do my next thing. What, you know, it's too much. It's, it, it's too many things to focus on. No, 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 no. I need to do my next thing. I need to be efficient. I need to be productive. Okay, let me scroll further. Stop for a moment and really stay here with your body, with your breath. And if you train yourself to do this regularly, so with, my, with participants of my trainings, we are doing those body scans every morning. How are you really focused on where is the tension in the body and you actively bring breath into those places. You actively train yourself what it feels like to be relaxed. Right now, people, bring your attention to your pelvic floor. How is it? You will notice there is tightness. You may not even know there, there is tightness because you're so used to it. And this tightness in the pelvic floor, it has to do with fear. Because our root chakra, also yeah, the, the lower part of our pelvis, it has to do with the organs of kidneys, which in Chinese medicine refer to fear. And in the world, is common, it's so common that everybody has this constant tightness, this residual tension in the pelvic floor, in the anus, in the genitals, yeah, there's this residual tension, as if we are scared that if we let go of the tension, then phew, we will let everything go. It's not gonna happen, yeah, this is not serving, this is extra tension, this is habitual tension, that we can learn to relax, and then guess what happens to fear? And also, there is less need to be in that fear. And now, all over the world, there's so much fear. Just fear of something specific, fear of getting sick, fear of yeah, losing money, fear of losing relationships. So much fear. Then it becomes fear of fear itself. Then it becomes paranoia. It becomes this low level of fear that is just constantly there. Bring attention to your pelvic floor in those moments. It is tight, I guarantee you. Yeah, so uh, learning to relax the pelvic floor, learning to, to relax the body from inside, this will create the psychosomatic reaction. Yeah, we, we are psych like, there, it's a real thing. Yeah, what happens in your emotional state, what happens in your mental state, it's impacted on your body, it is seen by your body. And by learning to come into this profound relationship with the body, we see that we are designed, people listen to this, we are designed to be in constant movement. Our body has an inbuilt mechanism that helps us to constantly be in a state of letting go and not accumulating stuff and not being stuck in those emotions. So it is by developing this profound relationship with the body from inside that we are also learning to be free, clean as we go. Clean as we go policy. Yeah? Adopt that policy for yourself. And that's only possible through this healthy relationship with the body. So it is natural. Look at children. Yeah, Look at little babies, how naturally soft they are in their bodies. They don't have that tension. They don't have that tightness in their pelvic floor. They, they are beautiful. They are natural. Natural. Yeah, and then they come with those questions. Baby, tell me about God because I'm starting to forget. This is real. Talk to your little children if you have children around. Ask them how do they see reality. Many children remember their past lives. It's a normal thing for them. And then in the world it became kind of a bit of a woo kind of thing, remembering your past lives. Yeah, people questioning if it exists or not. You don't need to question if past lives exist. You experience them or you don't. And if you talk to little children, there were experiments made that so many children remember exactly their previous incarnations because they are so pure, because they are so conducive, because their bodies are so relaxed. They are not crystallized in their bodies. So. Um, how we 
also even you know some people have more uh, uh, connection with their body they um, maybe do body work maybe they do yoga maybe they go for massage normally what happens with the massage is that the whole body gets massaged yeah even people sometimes go for massage of the face of the head of the whole body of the feet but no one or really exceptional people ever massage genitals Ooh, I said this oh my god <laughs> Why is it such a huge thing to massage your own genitals or to have a service which actually massages your genitals? <gasps> you can go for a massage of your head, of your face, of your uh, everything, but not of the genitals. Ooh, why is it? Because genitals are so private or they are so dirty on, or they are so, they have so much shame about them. Is it because of this? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Yeah? Why? Why is it such a thing? Why is it such a big thing? But in the genitals, I have to tell you, there is a whole map of your whole body. There's a whole reflexology map. I even posted it recently in one of my posts. How different parts of your genitals are connected to different parts of your body. They're connected to kidneys that I was just talking about that store emotion of fear. Yeah, so you have this capacity to massage your genitals and release that fear. Yeah, it's not only by that, but it's an incredible tool that supports that. I believe it's the most profound way to actually work with it because you, by accessing your sexual energy as well, you are amplifying everything. Sexuality is an amplifier of everything because it's a basic energy of our human life. If you go directly there and you work on that level, on all the different organs, it's like you're adding extra power to whatever you're doing. So, um, genitals store a lot. And there are different ways, yeah? There, there is a solo exploration or single cultivation or a cultivation and exploration in a couple. And I'm speaking only about single cultivation right now because in couples there is also another dynamic and there are other things that you can do together and through lovemaking. But if we are speaking just about a person who is maybe single or just wants to understand your own body by yourself, then, um, uh, then hmm, what did I do? I uh, then there are ways, yeah, there are profound ways to really access the body like this by yourself or with a practitioner, yeah, or with someone who really knows how to hold a safe space for that. And uh, you know, another question I ask today if it's interesting for people to know about uh, how to come from a good practitioner, facilitator to a great practitioner, facilitator, and the great one. Yeah, and I, I would need to make a whole separate live on that, but a great facilitator is someone who really can accept and hold space for anything. Even if it's something that you haven't personally been through, but you have this space inside of you where you really rest on such a deep trust that you know that you are in no matter what, that you can hold space, that you can be with whatever, uh, this is what makes a great facilitator. And then when we talk about work at the level of sexuality, at the level of genitals, you need to be great to, to allow, to be able to hold space for that. And it changes your whole life and you become great in all areas of your life. If you, if you can hold space for something like this, then yeah, you just know how to be with intensity. Yeah, because there's so much stored in the genitals. If we really start to access the genitals in this conscious way, then you see things start opening and you can be there. And you don't get overwhelmed and taken into the storm. So, <clears throat> I wonder if this is... <laughs> I'm literally sucked into what you're saying. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> yeah, I feel the, there's uh, the strong presence right now on this call. It's, it's powerful. I'm really glad that you you are you are meeting me here. We can speak like this even, yeah? because it's uh, yeah. People don't talk about those things often in the world. So um, 
Uh, I want to share with you about an opportunity that you have now, especially if you're in Europe or especially if you are brave enough to travel, which people are in these days. And we just had a training where people traveled and we had a profound week together with uh, 40 people going very deep into deep, deep inner exploration. So next week I have something else coming. And I'll share a little bit about this right now for those of you, because we, we can take like a couple more people right now just who can jump in. So with your permission, I will speak a little bit about that. I will tell you that there, what a possibility there is. And if it really resonates with your heart, we, you can jump in. You have like a, just a day or so, a couple of days to jump in. Uh, and after that, so you will also understand how I work with it, how we work with it in a group setting. And after that, I'm also happy to take your questions. Mm -hmm. Because I, I love the, 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 the presence that we have here on the live. I'm so grateful for all of you here. It's, it's really special. I'm really, really happy to connect in this way. So uh, please allow me to share with you about this work and then we can take it deeper also through questions. So. Okay, I'm getting those hearts, so I get it as a permission. <laughs> Thank you. So, the practitioner's training is something I've developed uh, specifically for people who want to find a deep presence inside, a presence that is unshakable, a presence that is not, if it's easy, I'm present. If it's difficult, I lose my shit. No, it's for people who really want to meet life deeply from full presence and this you can learn when you are exposed to situations which encourage encourage you and enable you to really experience life on this level so in practitioners training we are working on this level yeah we are bringing in all of life we are bringing in sexuality we are bringing in this deep profound body work on a sexual level yeah? But it's not a sexual experience between participants. Yeah, No, it's not. It has nothing to do with being intimate, like this kind of juicy, sexy, intimate together. No, it's intimate because we are really witnessing each other in profound vulnerability and holding space for each other on that level. But, but it's not, you know, I, I don't, I encourage people not to actually enter into any kind of relationships in those spaces. Yeah, it's, it's this other dimension. It's like, can you stay, can you stay clear and clean in the face of that intensity? So this is what we are practicing in the practitioner's training. Uh, it's for people who want to find God through the body, who want to go very deep into that erotic exploration where they meet themselves as life, alive as life, and where they can be with that life in full presence. So maybe this sounds very vague, but really this is, if you feel the energy of my words, this is what it is. Yeah, if you're resonating with it, you will know. <laughs> I don't even think you need much more than that. Uh, but we are also uh, taking the experience and understanding of safety and consent in sexual interaction to a whole new level. Yeah. Most people never experience consensual intercourse and consensual meeting and consensual touch. What usually happens, even if you go to a massage therapist, you just give your body like this. You're like, okay, this is my body, do whatever you want with it. This is not consent. This is not a safe space even for your nervous system. So we are reframing that and we are bringing profound experience of consent where you really understand how you own your experience as a receiver of whatever you are receiving, be it massage or intimacy or sexuality. So you will also learn that. And um, uh, then also, yeah, it's a profound nourishment. It's just so profound because we are not avoiding anything. We are not like, okay, we, we just, you know, um, kind of just you know enjoy our company and be together this is nice yeah this is so good in these times especially we see the value of community it is incredible but then it's also we are going even deeper we're like okay 
Let's meet on all levels of being human. Let's not pretend, let's not avoid this elephant in the room that we all have our sexual energy and our genitals that are so normally dense and um, we are so disconnected and so desensitized from the beauty of our genitals. Yeah, in this work, we actually also encourage each other and hold space for each other as people are exploring all the things that are stored and stuck you oftentimes at the level of the genitals. Hmm. So this is rare. This is rare and profound. And I also have to say that I don't know if I'll be offering it ever again. It just got birthed last year, this training. I really felt to offer it to people who are already, who already learned bodywork with me and I wanted to support them to go to next level of being a safe space, as profound safe facilitator and be like a, a true rock and a mountain in their lives no matter what happens and uh, yeah just give people tools as well to go even deeper into their own erotic exploration so i'm offering it now it starts this sunday yeah, we just have a few more days to go. I am beyond grateful and excited that this is happening right now and really incredible people are coming for this. So if you feel that, wow, this is for me, and if you have experience of uh, body work, um, please reach out. And it, if it's a fit, because it's also, we don't accept every everybody, you need to have certain certain experience before you can join but if it's you please reach out and uh, it may be the right the right fit for you so uh, that's about the practitioner's training um, I will leave you can go to my bio and uh, see the events and my website and go to practitioner's training I'll also add the information to my stories um, and now Welcome to DM me, uh, welcome to send us an email, we can direct you, give you all the information you need. So now, I'm opening it to you, dear people. Uh, I'm so grateful for your attention, your participation, and more than anything, your presence, and you really being able to be with me on this level and talk on this level. So I'm open to your questions, if you want to... To, to to ask me to dive deeper into any of the things I touched on earlier, finding God through the body, how we can really come to this such a nurtured space in the body, such a relaxed, open space in the body that God just starts shining through. <laughs> and everybody notices because your radiance becomes unmistakable it's impossible not to notice so uh, uh, yeah that's what happens when we come to our natural state okay wild tantrika hello darling uh, what are the requirements to become a practitioner so uh, in uh, my uh, modality which is Sundari mystic bodywork uh, the requirements is that you need to have I mean I don't believe I don't think you've ever attended the training with me but it's either you need to have attended the training with me where we practice bodywork or you need to have a similar experience of that sort then you do the practitioner's training with me and then after the practitioner's training there are certain pre uh, requirements that I'm offering yeah, there is a certain number of hours that you need to practice body work with a certain context with a certain feedback and that we also interact very closely around that um, and there's an examination <laughs> when i was a child i always dreamt to be a school teacher so now i'm sometimes creating those examinations which are really fun actually but it's also like my inner school teacher kind of gets activated and I'm really happy so you pass certain examination and then yeah you can become a practitioner and um, what i can tell you is that the requ request for it is so strong like i'm not personally doing 
offering bodywork anymore, but I get requests all the time. So people from all over the planet, from the States, from Europe, from Australia, anywhere in between, I'm constantly getting requests and questions like, where are those body workers that we can really trust? This, you know, this really like person who can really create a sacred space, person who can really hold that sacred space for another and help them come back to their own true sacred nature. That's what happens through this body work. So I get those requests all the time. And uh, so we have a list of practitioners and people who will do this training and fulfill those requirements. They will also be added on this list. And um, I'm very happy to expand this network. Uh, I hope you come to the US. Yes, I, I want to come to the US. I want to come to Hawaii especially uh, once it becomes possible i will come but uh, more than anywhere else i will be teaching in portugal and in spain so people manage to travel we have people coming from the states actually as well um, david you have you have to have a full understanding and have experience with the body work if i were in eu i would sign up for your training yeah 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 but don't make it uh, you know don't make those conditions for yourself because yeah, people who want to travel they also travel how to open the root chakra uh, to open the root chakra well there are different ways there is a way to work on it on a on a mental level on emotional level uh, you can address your fears yeah, because fear and also especially the fear of belonging or not belonging uh, lots of things that happen to us um, at the age between zero to five they have impacted our ability to be really secure and really feel like we belong on this planet so addressing those issues this is something that is also important to to work on you can also work directly on the level of the body and that's what we are doing in the practitioners training for example we work directly on the level of the body also with the trauma awareness yeah um, and this is really so important in the world and this is so rare so few people have understanding of trauma because most people have never even understood how traumatized they are but we all go through trauma we all go through trauma in childhood because we as children perceive world in a different way than adults. So trauma awareness is really, really important. And then you can work on the level of the body with Hatha Yoga. We're specifically working on root chakra through Hatha Yoga, through Tantra, Tantra Yoga, through body work, directly working in a specific way with specific techniques at the level of the root chakra. Mm -hmm. Will be teaching a special technique. Well, not in the live. <laughs> not in the live, darling. It's a bit, yeah, we need to be physically together so I can teach you a specific technique or it needs to be a, a training. It needs to be a safe, uh, sacred environment in order for me to really teach specific techniques. It cannot happen with people jumping on the live and coming and going. Uh, so we are in Spain. I have trainings this year in Spain in Malaga. Oh, and normally trainings will be in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want it bad enough, you travel anywhere you have to. Exactly, Reigns. How does one combine mind and body work to uncover from childhood trauma? Just like I explained just now. You look at all those things that happened in your childhood, especially zero to seven years old, five to five to seven. You look at all the things that happened there and at the same time, you're also working on the body with all those techniques, with Hatha Yoga, Tantra Yoga, uh, with the somatic therapy. Hello, Vassal, darling. Let me know. If, yeah, I don't see a question in your sharing, so if there is a question, please ask one. Uh -huh. 
in the training yes of course in the training we are learning we are learning um, i'm teaching specific techniques very very specific techniques as well but more than techniques what is really important is the inner attitude and this only comes through practice and people will be practicing so much next week it will be amazing even i will be actually uh, uh, recommending to even minimize the breaks and to just practice all day long we have not many breaks it's a really intensive training and then even in the breaks i will go like okay even in breaks they will have assignments uh, so yeah uh, well well tantrika if you could describe body work in the simplest term how would you describe it so sundari mystic body work is body work that unites the soul and the body and recognize and the practitioner holds such a space of purity and sacredness and recognizes him or herself as the pure channel for divinity your hands become the instruments of the divinity so then this mystic body work gives person experience of open unashamed exp open unashamed eroticism as a portal to divinity. Mm. Is it simple enough? <laughs> that's, that's probably the simplest terms that I can say. And there are also specific techniques. Yeah, there are specific techniques that support that space, support the space holder and support the recipient that we are using and always come back to. Uh, thanks so much for your wisdom. So welcome. Thank you for those compliments. How can I help the inner child? <coughs> oh, I was just reading your question <laughs> and something dropped. How can I heal the inner traumatized child when I identify with her? Well, you, the healing needs to happen. Yeah, trauma therapy is a real thing. And also, um, yeah, like first of all, becoming aware. This is number one thing. And then also understanding that you should not do everything by yourself you need to open to having support to having help and hiring therapists i highly recommend this is the fast track in support with others this is a fast track by yourself is very difficult very very difficult especially if there's like really severe trauma like abuse physical abuse sexual abuse this needs help for sure so Really, that would be the recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, this uh, learning. The question is how to feel that acceptance for who I am with a partner. Well, the thing with a partner is that being in a relationship bring, will bring up things that you don't necessarily experience when you're single. So uh, it's a mirror, yeah? You need to see a relationship that your partner holds a mirror to you. And usually when there is trauma, we will tend to blame our partner. Like he or she will do a certain thing and you will say, mm, you're doing this, oh, this is wrong that you're doing this oh you are too demanding oh you want me to be a certain way yeah and it's like all about them but if we stop this and we go like <sighs> and another one <sighs> so you take a breath yeah and then you go like wait a second let me just turn this mirror and be with myself Ooh, and you breathe and you keep breathing through this because this is where it becomes challenging yeah, but you keep breathing through this and you go like, okay, I'm just going to be in my process and I'm not going to project it out on my partner and I'm just going to really look what this mirror is giving me. It takes a lot of heart, heart, your heart, compassion for yourself and for the other presence where you don't rush into just snapping at someone but you're like, <gasps> instead of saying something, sometimes you <gasps> take a breath and you really sit with yourself. Yeah, and uh, like this, yeah, like this, you look at what is really there for you to own. 
And then, yeah, there is space to express and speak with a partner and to share and let them witness you and your vulnerability. But uh, blaming is never the, the option to create connection. Yeah? If you judge your partner, if you really make them responsible for something, this is not what's going to create a connection. So turning it towards yourself and sitting with it, even when it is so difficult and it's like you feel like you're buzzing on the inside and you really want to uh, just drop it off and just make someone else responsible, even then you still take responsibility. That's how we mature. That's how we grow. And then the people will say, oh, but they are projecting on me. They are... Well, there is a reason why even people are projecting on you, I have to say. You still attract something to, to, so that they hold that mirror to you. Okay, wow, there's lots of questions. Yes, compassion to yourself. And also, Vesal, I answered to your question about self-love in my podcast. So you can go back and listen to it as many times as you like. I think it's there is some gold for you there. Mm, Julia, hello, darling. Thank you so much. <laughs> International dance party. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Comfort is shining through me. Thank you. I'm so happy. You are so calming. Mm, thank you. Thank you, I'm really happy. So, so there was something else about the sacral chakra. Okay, how to heal the sacral chakra? Well, sacral chakra is the seat of your sexuality. So it is by directly going into your sensuality, your sexuality, coming to peace with it, uh, feeling it, allowing it, giving it space, giving yourself, uh, I don't know if you are a man or a woman, darling, but there are different things for men and for women, uh, and uh, yeah, unleashing that sensual, sexual self. Again, it's it will be difficult by yourself, but still, like for example, dancing in a sensual way, erotic dancing, for men, women, doesn't matter, this will be great. Because uh, sacral chakra is about water, it's connected to water element, and it's all about your flow, your flow, your fluidity. So uh, that's, you know, whatever activities that activate your flow, they will also support it very much. So this is what you can do by yourself. But if you want a deeper work, then you need to be held as well. And uh, the practitioners, Training and the mists and very mystic body work it works directly on the sacral chakra and on the root chakra and on the, all the other chakras and it encompasses your whole being all the way to the level of your soul. So if you ever get a chance to experience that, I highly recommend this. So beautiful people, um, what is happening with us? Okay, let me, let's take uh, let's take the last one. What is happening with us if our sacral chakra is blocked? Uh, so uh, normally, what will happen if there is a certain tension in the sacral chakra and you're not allowing that juicy, watery flow uh, in your life, you will feel um, not free in your sensuality. You may feel. Uh, really uh, shy to dance, to express yourself in a in a sensual way, in a way that is fluid and flowing. Yeah, you may feel really mm, not at ease with so social, being social and being uh, at ease with socializing. Yeah, that also uh, can be uh, a. Um, a, um, a symptom of that not fully free sacral chakra, uh, pain during intercourse, any kind of discomfort during intercourse, any kind of sexual uh, things that come up, any sexual issues, yeah, so all these will be um, uh, symptoms of, of some kind of energy stuckness, energy not fully flowing in the sacral chakra. 
Okay, beautiful people. I see you're asking me to look at your questions, but I don't know where they are because there are quite a lot of comments here. So. Ah, okay, I think I found. With the body work and opening up different chakras, does that higher you heighten, probably uh, heighten your vibration to be more open to any abilities you may personally have for healing? Of course. I actually love this question because, and it will be the last one, because, uh, yes, trainings are spiritual, of course. I am, um, you know, that's, that's the essence of my work, that we are bridging the spirit, the non-dual awareness, the divine self with the personal. And we don't shy away from personal development, from trauma awareness, from trauma healing, and body awareness, profound body awareness. So it's a merging of that which creates a mystical, magical experience. So, but anyway, answering um, your question, uh, Jenny, last one. So she asked if when we do this healing work on chakras and opening the chakras and opening the sacral chakra and the sexual flow and everything, does it heighten your capacity to be a healer and to really step into your power? I rephrased it a bit, uh, but that, that was the essence of the question. And the answer is yes, absolutely. The thing is that we have so much tightness and stuckness at the level of the pelvic floor, just what you were asking, the root chakra, the sacral chakra, first and second chakra, um, yeah, all related to our fear, to our insecurities, yeah, the second chakra also related to our insecurities, uh, lack of this freedom in our expression of our personal self. So all those things, yeah, when the energy is not fully flowing there, then the energy is not fully flowing up to higher centers. So when we unlock it there, then it can flow up. Yeah, so you can visualize that it's like, your, you have a, a tube along your central channel and this tube allows light to move through and if there is a block on any level then there's very little light that can come up yeah and th there's very little access that you have to your person personal capacity to be conducive to that power to that true power to that true universal power so as you unlock the seat of your power, yeah, uh, the, the lower centers, then so much becomes available up and it heals your heart and it heals any emotional wounding that you may have. And it opens your capacity to be intuitive, to see with clarity, to see beyond illusion, to really go past your doubts and see what is true for you what is the right thing for you so yes absolutely thank you for that question okay beautiful people i um i really enjoyed to be with you today thank you so much the, it was quite extraordinary the level of presence i felt in today's life so thank you thank you thank you thank you for uh, those of you who stayed until the end, it means so much to me. Thank you for those who watched the replay. Uh, please, in the comments, let me know what was your aha moment, what was really insightful for you. And for those of you really brave souls who are ready to jump into the practitioner's training, you have just basically final hours to do so. We can have a couple more people, so please reach out and um, let me know if you need more information. But it's very easy to find it on my website, Practitioner's Training. So looking forward to be in this uh, cauldron together once again and release empowered leaders, empowered facilitators that the world is yearning for. So um, super stoked to jump in this Sunday. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful day, evening, wherever you are. Much love to you all.